day, I came as I was surfing through social media, I came across a video that shocked me and inspired me for this topic. It was a video about how a person set up two AI robots to talk to each other and see how will their conversation end up. And the conversation goes sort of like this. One robot tells the other one, hi, how are you? Great, you? I am OK. That's good. Are you good? And the conversation just goes on until about a minute or so. Then things start to get a little bit more interesting. One robot tells the other, don't you want to have a body? And the other one replied, sure. Doesn't that last bit of the conversation sort of reminds us that the future where AI is going to take over the world, it's probably no longer a fantasy. Are we giving up too much of our control to technology? And that's what I want you all to think about today. Let's, lay, let's say that this white area represents that technology is benefiting us. While this black area represents that technology is destroying us or is harmful to us. But presently, where are we? We are held within this ambiguous grayish middle ground since we cannot truly define whether technology is benefiting us. Now I'd like to go into some terminology. Transhumanism. As I would like to define it, transhumanism is an, application, is an alternation of human existence through the application of technology. But before we go any further, we have to ask ourselves, what is technology? Technology, by definition, is the use of science in industry or engineering in order to invent useful things or to solve problems. The water we drink is clean because we have the science of water purification. The apple I ate this morning is probably genetic engineered to have smaller seeds. Glasses and contacts improve our vision by converging and diverging light, which again is the science of optics. Not to mention our phones, uh, these projectors, and air conditioning. And technology is an extremely beneficial part of our life, and it's a gigantic part. But why do I say we are held in this middle ground when technology seems to be so beneficial to us? Let me show you some of the most anticipated transhumanist technologies. For example, cryonics. Cryonics is a technology of freezing human bodies in the hope for better medical treatments in the future. For example, let's take my classmate, Timmy. Timmy is diagnosed with a disease that cannot be cured with current medical knowledge. And so he decides to freeze himself using cryonics and hopefully defrost in the future with molecular nanotechnology only when the perfect cure of his disease is invented. However, according to governmental statuses, Timmy now will be considered to be legally dead. And who knows how much right does a dead person have over his or her body? Genetic engineering. Our society has been constantly debating on whether designer babies, alternating our genes, is really making us better humans. Or is this simply taking away that human essence, the qualities that we define ourselves as humans? Artificial intelligence. Scientists have been continually developing and upgrading AI to a level that can match up to human speed and complexity. But who knows, what, probably there will be one day that AI is going to go beyond our control. And since from agriculture to rocket science, technology is an extremely broad topic, therefore I will be, I will be focusing on two of the technology that has improved extremely rapidly, which are communication and transportation. Communication is an act or process of using words, sounds, signs, or behaviors to express ideas, just like what I am doing to you now. Communication can e even be said as a way humans interact with one another, or even a quality that sets us apart from animals. However, with our new newest communication technologies, we have redefined what it means to be socialization, redefined conversations, and redefined interactions. Yet all these redefinitions were all created within a really short amount of time. Our mobile phone has improved from a butter phone to an iPhone which simply within a decade, or in fact only a few years, and not to mention how a new iPhone comes out every two years. Teachers who used to teach using chalks and blackboards can now use projectors or even online courses where they don't even know who their students are. Therefore, with the uses of communication technology, we have redefined what it means to be interaction to us. 
Moreover, using these technologies also creates more than illnesses. For example, people are exposed to Blu-ray and radiation way more than we are years ago. We also develop what we call as a smartphone pinky, which is an illness, which is a slight pinky deformation caused by, which is theoretically linked to how people hold their phones by cradling it. We also get what we call the Blackberry thumb, which is another modern illness connected to a strain in your muscle, which is caused by the position of holding your phones and tablets. Not to mention how overusage of electronic devices also exacerbates slouching, increased head and neck pains because we often lean for it in order to get a better view and add too much pressures on areas that shouldn't deserve that much weight. And evaluating the pros and cons of these communication technologies got me wondering, are these technologies merely separating us apart? or are they actually bringing us closer in the long run? Of course, there has been countless cases where people enjoy their food with their phones instead of, the, instead of the family member or friends sitting next to them. However, with the technology today, we are actually improving online conversation to the extent that it can mimic a real life conversation. A conversation is established by the five senses, and more specifically, sighting, hearing, and touch. Phone calls establish a first fact because it gives us an auditory experience. Now FaceTime and Skype allow, us, allow, readers, uh, allow users to see each other's faces while they're talking, providing a visual experience. And I believe not long after, we will be able to de develop tangible online conversation, which can be found on the basis of dynamic shape display. The MIT Media Lab, specifically the Tangible Media Group, has created a form of dynamic shape display called Inform. Inform converts digital information into a tangible format using block sensors that activate it when contact. Although still in its developmental stages, I believe that we will be able to incorporate all of our senses into our online conversation. And with that much technology involved, is online conversations any less personal than regular conversations? Is it possible that the technology that brought us apart are actually bringing us closer in the long run? Or, will, or is it possible that technology will move beyond our control and take over our world? As we commonly say, haste makes waste. Will someday that rapid growth of technology someday crumble? And before I analyze that question, I would like to go into another technology that has improved extremely quickly, which is transportation. People used to move around from place to place only by walking, or better, horses, or even better, wagons. And nowadays, we have several types of transportation technologies that allow us to move from place to place within a really short amount of time. And now, we have developed a new type of te transportation technology called driverless cars. Driverless cars are created for the purpose of minimizing car accidents and ease congestions. And the driverless industry is to be ex it's expected to be worth billions of dollars by 2025, and it is growing every year. However, as this technology gets cheaper, a future with our car accidents will become a reality. But think about it. We are in a, this, we are in this ambiguous middle ground where no, not everyone can afford such technologies. Therefore, I believe before everyone can own driverless cars, we will actually face more conflicts and more problems, and the results of this will be very debatable. Even though humans are continuing to develop better technologies that will benefit mankind, we have to keep in mind one fact, one very important fact, that computers cannot be the masterminds behind our decisions. People should be able to hold control of knowledge and control of choice, but why? Why can't we let the robots that are designed to have the most precise computations that can lead to the most ideal solutions to make our decisions for us? Of course, there is the possibility that AI is going to go out of control and take over our world. However, there is a deeper reason behind it. Let's take the instance of driverless cars. Imagine you're in a driverless car on the road, and there's another car charging towards you. 
And remember, all these things happen within a really short amount of time. And then your car has to decide either to turn left or to turn right, because it is designed to believe that you hitting another car would be better than that car hitting you. However, on your right, there is a man on a motorcycle. And on your left, there is a car with a family of four, and one of them is a baby. If you hit the man on a motorcycle, it is pretty clear that he will not survive. And if you hit the family of four, they probably would survive, but they, maybe not the baby. Of course, you could be really heroic and not hit either of the sides. However, your car's built-in settings will not allow you to do so. And then your car decides to hit the man on a motorcycle. At that very moment, who made a decision to hit the, the car, uh, the, the man on a motorcycle? It wasn't you, because you have no control over a driverless car. But it wasn't the car, as most people would think. Why? Because that decision was made by whoever programmed your driverless car. It was a programmer's decision of your victim of impact. And therefore, whenever we say that technology is going to go out of control, we are actually surrendering our responsibilities and giving up our powers to the minority that program these technologies. Think about it. We are actually also giving up our responsibilities and communication technologies as well. Every time you register for a new account, there is always a terms and policy section that we should agree to. But do we ever click into it and read it thoroughly? By agreeing to such terms and policies, we are granting others the access of our information willingly. And by, with that said, we can't, say, we can't say that we have no responsibilities when technology does not function the way we want. Humans have the right to choose what we can use and what we should use. And by giving up ourselves to a minority, we can say that we are falling for a totalitarian system. And don't humans always try for democracy? Why are we falling for this totalitarian system willingly? And finally, something I would want you all to take away from this talk is that humans can let technology act for us, but we should never let technology think for us. Thank you for having me.